now we are going to discuss an other important topic which is embolism an embolus is a detached intravascular solid liquid or gaseous mass that is carried by the blood to a site distant from its point of origin where it causes tissue dysfunction or infarction almost all emboli represent some part of a dislodged thrombus and hence the term thromboembolism is used types thrombi and clots fat droplets fluid and air embolism so these are the types of an embolus rare forms of emboli include atherosclerotic debris which are cholesterol emboli tumor fragments bone marrow or even foreign bodies depending upon the matter in the emboli they can be solid for example detached thrombi which is thromboemboli erythromatous material tumor cell clumps tissue fragments parasites bacteria bacterial clumps and foreign bodies liquid emboli for example fat globules amniotic fluid and bone marrow then gaseous emboli like air emboli and emboli caused by other gases depending upon infection they may be bland when sterile or septic when infected depending upon the source of the emboli cardiac emboli from the left side of the heart for example emboli originating from the atrium and atrial appendages in fact in the left ventricle or vegetations of endocarditis atrial emboli for example seen in the systemic arteries in the brain spleen kidney intestine venous emboli seen in pulmonary arteries lymphatic emboli also occur depending upon the flow of blood and in this case two special types of emboli are mentioned paradoxical embolus an embolus which is carried from the venous side of circulation to the arterial side or vice versa is called paradoxical or crossed embolus for example through atriovenous communication such as in patent foramen ovale septal defect of the heart and atrio venous shunts in the lungs retrograde embolus an embolus which travels against the flow of blood is called retrograde embolus and the example is metastatic deposits in the spine from carcinoma prostate 
the spread occurs by retrograde embolism through intraspinal veins which carry tumor emboli from large thoracic and abdominal veins due to increased pressure in the body cavities for example during coughing or straining so thromboembolism a detached thrombus or a part of thrombus constitute the most common type of embolism these may arise in the arterial or venous circulation arterial or systemic thromboembolism arterial emboli may be derived from the following sources causes within the heart constitute 80 to 85 percent these are mural thrombi in the left atrium or left ventricle vegetations on the mitral valve or aortic valves prosthetic heart valves and cardiomyopathy causes within the arteries these include emboli develop in relation to atherosclerotic plaques aortic aneurysms pulmonary veins and paradoxical arterial emboli from systemic circulation the effects of arterial emboli depend upon their size site of lodgement and adequacy of collateral circulation if the vascular occlusion occurs the following ill effects may result number 1 infarction of the organ or its affected parts for example ischemic necrosis in the lower limbs around 70 to 75% spleen kidney brain intestine to gangrene following infarction in the lower limbs if the collateral circulation is inadequate arthritis and mycotic aneurysm formation from bacterial endocarditis myocardial infarction may occur following coronary embolism sudden death may result from coronary embolism or embolism in the middle cerebral artery now venous thromboembolism venous emboli may arise from the following sources thrombi in the veins of the lower legs are the most common cause of venous emboli thrombi in the pelvic veins thrombi in the veins of the upper limbs thrombosis in cavernous sinus of the brain thrombi in the right side of the heart the most significant effect of venous embolism is obstruction of pulmonary arterial circulation leading to pulmonary embolism now this chart shows arterial thromboembolism and venous thromboembolism while discussing arterial thromboembolism heart most common mural thrombi left atrium left ventricle vegetative mural endocarditis 
valvular endocarditis, prosthetic heart valve, cardiomyopathy, no lungs, pulmonary veins, and systemic aortic atherosclerosis, carotid atherosclerosis, aortic aneurysms. Coming to venous thromboembolism, systemic deep vein thrombosis, most common, pelvic veins, cavernous sinus in heart, right side of the heart, lungs, pulmonary artery. Pulmonary thromboembolism, regarding its definition, pulmonary embolism is the most common and fatal form of venous thromboembolism in which there is occlusion of pulmonary arterial tree by thromboemboli. Pulmonary thrombosis is uncommon and may occur in pulmonary atherosclerosis and pulmonary hypertension. Regarding its etiology, pulmonary emboli are most common in hospitalized or bedridden patients or may occur in ambulatory patients as well. The causes are thrombi originating from large veins of the lower legs such as popliteal, femoral and iliac veins and are the cause in 95% of pulmonary emboli. Less common sources are varicosities of superficial veins of legs and pelvic veins such as periprostatic, periovarian, uterine and broad ligament veins. Now pathogenesis, detachment of thrombi from any of the above mentioned sites produces a thromboembolus that flows through the venous drainage into the large veins draining into the right side of the heart. If the embolus is large, it is impacted at the bifurcation of the main pulmonary artery called saddle embolism or saddle embolus or may found in the right ventricle or its outflow tract. Most commonly, there are multiple emboli or a large embolus may be fragmented into many small emboli which then impacted in a number of vessels particularly affecting the lower lobes of the lungs. Rarely paradoxical embolism may occur by passage of an embolus from right heart into the left heart through atrial or ventricular septal defect. In this way, pulmonary emboli may reach systemic circulation. Consequences of pulmonary embolism, it can lead to sudden death, acute corpulmonale, pulmonary infarction, pulmonary hemorrhage, it may undergo resolution, pulmonary hypertension or chronic corpulmonale or pulmonary atherosclerosis. Systemic embolism, this is the type of arterial embolism that originates commonly from the thrombi in the diseased heart 
especially in the left ventricle which include myocardial infarction cardiomyopathy rheumatic heart disease congenital heart disease infective endocarditis and prosthetic cardiac valves these arterial emboli invariably cause infarction at the site of lodgement which include lower extremities brain and internal organs like spleen kidneys intestine the effects of venous emboli is to lodge in the lungs now in this chart we differentiate between pulmonary thrombosis and pulmonary thromboembolism pathogenesis in pulmonary thrombosis locally formed whereas in pulmonary thromboembolism traveled from distance location in case of pulmonary thrombosis in the small arteries and branches whereas in pulmonary thrombosis in major arteries and branches attachment to vessel wall firmly attached whereas in pulmonary thromboembolism loosely attached or lying free gross appearance head pale tail red in case of pulmonary thrombosis whereas in pulmonary thromboembolism no distinction in the head and tail smooth surface dry dull surface microscopic features in pulmonary thrombosis platelets and fibrin in layers so there are lines of zen whereas in thrombo embolism mixed with blood clot now pulmonary thromboembolism if more than 60% of the circulation is obstructed then sudden death due to cardiovascular collapse or right heart failure occur but silent if small or there are sudden embolus or paradoxical embolus or it can lead to pulmonary hypertension infarction pulmonary hemorrhage due to rupture of blood vessels more than 95% of cases pulmonary embolism originate from deep vein thrombosis thromboemboli most important clinically venous originate from veins and carried by venous system to lungs arterial originate in large arteries that is aorta carried by arterial blood into the organs for example brain kidney spleen and then paradoxical originate in the venous system and cross through a heart shunt and foramen ovale to enter arterial circulation pulmonary thromboembolism as i discussed before etiology is deep vein thrombosis of the lower extremities like femoral vein and pelvis pathogenesis depend on the size of the embolus extent of embolization and collateral circulation sudden death 
can result from the occlusion of main pulmonary artery or main branch can cause sudden death by preventing blood going to the lungs due to saddle embolus cause of death is acute right heart failure or strain on the right heart resulting in acute cor pulmonale pulmonary infarction small thromboemboli occlude medium sized or small sized pulmonary arteries which in some cases produces a hemorrhagic infarction less than 10% of thromboemboli to the lungs produce infarction this is due to the dual blood supply of the lungs mainly the pulmonary arteries and the bronchial arteries pulmonary hypertension non occlusive thrombi which are silent may lead to pulmonary hypertension eventually due to increased pressure in the pulmonary vasculature clinical findings include a sudden onset of dyspnea that is difficulty in breathing and tachypnea that is rapid breathing with or without pleuritic chest pain hemoptysis which is coughing up of blood now in this photograph you can very well appreciate saddle shaped embolus which is present in the pulmonary vasculature now this is the diagram which shows saddle shape embolus also you can well appreciate basically it's a diagram of the previous photograph systemic or arterial thromboembolism emboli traveling in the arterial circulation etio pathogenesis is intracardiac mural thrombi which are 80% left atrium dilatation and fibrillation seen in 25% heart valve vegetations aortic mural thrombi and paradoxical emboli sites of embolization lower extremities 75% brain 10% intestine kidney spleen arterial emboli cause infarction of the affected tissue now here you can appreciate in the photograph there is a embolus present in the blood vessel of the brain now other photograph shows that this embolus has caused area of infarction in the brain so effects of emboli depends on collateral vascular supply of the affected tissue vulnerability of the tissue to ischemia and caliber of occluded vessel now there is a list of organs which withstand hypoxia for example brain 3 to 4 minutes heart about 20 minutes fibrous tissue and skeletal muscles for hours then oxygen content of blood hemoglobin concentration and saturation for example heart failure patient 
have low oxygen concentration in blood, anemia or cyanosis further increases hypoxia. Now we discuss fat embolism. This is due to fat globules and symptoms develop one to three days later after trauma like fractures of bone, pelvis, closed fractures, soft tissue trauma, in obesity, osteoporosis, burns, diabetes mellitus and pancreatitis. Pathogenesis, the following mechanisms are proposed to explain the pathogenesis of fat embolism and they may act singly or in combination. Number one is mechanical theory. Mobilization of liquid fat may occur following trauma due to the bone and soft tissues. The fat globules enter venous circulation and finally arrested in the small veins in the lungs. Some of the fat globules may pass through into the systemic circulation to be trapped in other organs. Emulsion instability theory. The pathogenesis of fat embolism in non-traumatic cases, the fat emboli are formed by aggregation of plasma lipids like chylomicrons and fatty acids due to disturbance in natural emulsification of fat. Intravascular coagulation theory in stress, release of some factors activates disseminated intravascular coagulation and aggregation of fat emboli. Toxic injury theory, the small blood vessels of lungs are chemically injured by plasma levels of free fatty acids resulting in increased vascular permeability and consequent pulmonary edema. Now, there is a syndrome which is called fat embolism syndrome. This includes pulmonary insufficiency by obstructing vessels, dyspnea, hypoxia, pulmonary edema, then cerebral embolism, neurological symptoms like confusion, drowsiness, disorientation, fits, cutaneous embolism, obstructing dermal capillaries, formation of petechiae on the skin, conjunctiva and palate, they can be anemia or they can be thrombocytopenia. Now we label fat embolism syndrome and the criteria of diagnosis is major signs, confusion, agitation, particular rash in axilla, palate, conjunctiva, hand in 20 to 50 percent of cases and shortness of breath which is hypoxia and partial pressure of oxygen less than 60 millimeter of mercury. Then minor signs, tachycardia, thrombocytopenia, anemia, pyrexia, fat in urine. So one major and four minor or two major features we label as fat embolism syndrome. So coming back to the causes of 
फैट एम्बुलिज्म मकैनिकल ड्यू टू फैट ग्लोब्यूल्स प्लेटलेट एग्रीगेशन अरिथ्रोसाइट एग्रीगेशन एंड बायोकेमिकल रिलीज ऑफ फ्री फैटी एसिड एंड प्लेटलेट एक्टिवेशन क्लिनिकल फीचर्स वन टू थ्री डेज पोस्ट ट्रॉमा टिकेपनिया डिस्निया टैकीकार्डिया न्यूरोलॉजिकल सिम्टम्स पिटिकी एंड अनिमिया कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस ऑफ फैट एम्बुलिज्म द इफेक्ट ऑफ फैट एम्बुलिज्म डिपेंड अपॉन द साइज एंड क्वान्टिटी ऑफ फैट ग्लोब्यूल्स एंड वेदर और नॉट द एम्बुलाई पास थ्रू द लंग्स इन टू द सिस्टेमिक सर्कुलेशन नाउ ब्रीफली वी डिस्कस अबाउट पलमरी फैट एम्बुलिज्म माइक्रोस्कोपिकली द लंग्स शो हाइपरीमिया अडीमा पटिकल हेमरेजिज एंड चेंजेस ऑफ एडल्ट respiratory distress syndrome pulmonary infarction is usually not a feature of fat embolism because of small size of globules in routine stains the fat globules in the pulmonary arteries capillaries and alveolar spaces may appear as vacuoles frozen section is necessary for the confirmation of fat globules and stains which are used are sudan dyes like sudan black sudan 3 and 4 oil red o and osmic acid systemic fat emboli in brain the pathological finding in the brain are particular hemorrhages on the lepto meninges and minute hemorrhages in the parenchyma microscopically microinfarcts of the brain edema and hemorrhages are seen the cns manifestations include delirium convulsions stupor coma and sudden death in kidney renal fat embolism present in the glomerular capillaries may cause decreased glomerular filtration other effects include tubular damage and renal insufficiency other organs beside the brain and kidneys other findings in the systemic embolism are pitiki in the skin conjunctiva serosal surface fat globules in the urine and sputum now this photograph shows that fat globules are present in the blood vessel which is in trapping the rbcs and other components of the blood air embolism we are going to discuss now gas bubbles within the circulation can obstruct vascular flow and cause ischemic injury more than 100 cc of air can cause symptoms they may combine and form frothy masses and they can physically obstruct a vessel the etiology of air embolism like obstetrical procedures laparoscopic procedures insufflation of uterine tubes injury to the chest wall accidental opening of veins during surgery 
decompression sickness which is seen in deep sea divers scuba divers underwater construction workers and unpressurized aircrafts now the effects the effects of decompression sickness depends upon the following factors like depth or altitude reached duration of exposure to altered pressure rate of ascent or descent general condition of the individual now pathological changes are more pronounced in sudden decompression from high pressure to normal levels than in those who decompress from lower pressure to normal these changes are more serious in obese persons as nitrogen gas is more soluble in fat than in body fluids clinical effects of decompression sickness are of two types it may be acute or chronic acute form occurs due to acute obstruction of small blood vessels in the vicinity of joints and skeletal muscles the clinical condition is characterized by the following features the bends as the patient doubles up in the bed due to acute pain in the joints ligaments and tendons and the chokes occur due to accumulation of bubbles in the lungs resulting in acute respiratory distress cerebral effects may manifest in the form of vertigo coma and sometimes death chronic form is due to foci of ischemic necrosis throughout the body especially the skeletal muscle system ischemic necrosis may be due to embolism per se but other factors as platelet activation intravascular coagulation and hypoxia might contribute these features of chronic form are avascular necrosis of bones for example head of femur tibia and humerus neurological symptoms may occur due to ischemic necrosis in the central nervous system these include paresthesias and paraplegia lung involvement in the form of hemorrhage edema emphysema and atelectasis may be seen the result in dyspnea non productive cough and chest pain skin manifestation include itching patchy erythema sinuses and edema other organs like parenchymal cells of liver and pancreas may show lipid vacuoles now another important topic which is decompression sickness occurs when individuals are exposed to sudden change in the atmospheric pressure when air is breathed at high pressure increase amount of gas particularly nitrogen become dissolved in the blood and tissues as the partial pressure increases more and more nitrogen dissolves into the tissue till saturation 
the difference in the partial pressure of a gas between two places is called the pressure gradient. When the pressure becomes less, the nitrogen comes out of tissue. If the diver then ascends too rapidly, that is depressurized, the nitrogen expands in the tissues and bubbles out of solution in the blood to form gas emboli. So, in divers, nitrogen bubbles present due to decompression. Nitrogen bubbles in the blood due to rapid decompression. These bubbles when tiny or micro bubbles are also called gas seeds. Gas bubbles occlude small vessels and block blood flow in muscles, joints, soft tissues, bends, that is watery tissues. They compress the nerves. They are seen under the skin causing red blotches present in the shoulders and chest. The immune system recognizes these air bubbles as foreign bodies and platelets gather around them. In lungs, gas bubbles in the vasculature cause edema, hemorrhage and focal atelectasis or emphysema leading to form of respiratory distress called chokes and also they initiate DIC which is disseminated intravascular coagulation. Cerebral decompression sickness, air bubbles in the brain causes tunnel vision, dizziness, tingling sensation, confusion, numbness, loss of bladder control, difficulty in balance and paralysis. Now, Kaysen's disease is a chronic form which is due to persistence of gas emboli in the skeletal muscle system leads to multiple foci of necrosis. The more common sites are the femoral heads, tibia and humerus. Then we are going to discuss briefly about amniotic fluid embolism, epidemiology occurs during labor or immediately postpartum, maternal mortality reaches up to 80%, pathogenesis, there are tears in the placental membranes or rupture of uterine veins. Amniotic fluid enters the maternal circulation, precipitates cardiorespiratory collapse, possibly due to anaphylactic reaction to fetal antigens and disseminated intravascular coagulation. As procoagulants are present in the amniotic fluid. Features are sudden onset of dyspnea, cyanosis, hypotensive shock, followed by fits and coma. If the patient survives, pulmonary edema and DIC develops. Precipitates cardiovascular collapse, possibly due to anaphylactic reaction to fetal antigens and disseminated intravascular coagulation. 
dyspnea is due to pulmonary edema or acute respiratory distress syndrome bleeding is due to dic as i mentioned that over 50% of patient die within an hour diagnosis is confirmed at autopsy fetal squam cells lenugo hair fat from vernix caseosa are present in maternal pulmonary vessels autopsy also shows in the pulmonary vessels there are fetal squams hair vernix women who survive have permanent neurological impairment in about 85% of cases prognosis permanent neurological impairment well laboratory findings show hypoxia and respiratory acidosis now this flow chart shows the outcome of necrotic fetal or placental cells which enter the circulation the green shows they may block the pulmonary artery pulmonary embolism pulmonary hypertension sudden dyspnea chest pain tachycardia signs of right sided and left sided heart failure whereas the blue blocks shows may cause immunological response activation of coagulation cascade depletion of coagulation factors abnormal bleeding which is shown by light green blocks shock postpartum hemorrhage whereas brownish block shows there are microemboli there are tissue hypoxia renal failure coronary insufficiency respiratory failure seizures coma hemolytic anemia now this photograph shows the blood vessels contain squames and hair in the maternal circulation this photograph also shows presence of fetal fat and formation of thrombus in the circulation of mother and in this photograph the outcome is extensive necrosis and inflammatory infiltrate now dear students i have discussed with you embolism if you find any difficulty please do feel free to write in the comment box and inshallah i'll answer it